rush through a few slides. Uh, my talk is on anterior horn meniscus uh, tear outside in repair. Uh, basically, you need to know is that you you need to treat your meniscus tears. You can't leave them alone because it causes osteoarthritis. We all know about it. So repairs are in demand these days. Uh, the incidence of an isolated anterior horn tear is about 1% to 3%. So that's a very minuscule. And uh, another point that you need to take is the horizontal tears. Usually, that's the normal pattern. Is always accompanied with a parameniscal cyst. Uh, why anterior horn meniscus tears? Because it's shown to significantly increase the tibiofemoral contact pressures. And uh, repairing these tears have restored these contact pressures to normal. And therefore, surgical repair of meniscal lesions is indicated wherever possible. Uh, it's pretty difficult to diagnose sometimes because uh, your patients don't give you that kind of symptom. Sometimes pain in the anterior aspect of the knee and the MRI imaging may not provide you adequate details for the anterior horn to fully confirm the diagnosis. That paper in 2022 at AJSM with the clinically, uh, clinical significance of anterior horn meniscal tears uh, by MRI images, they did consecutive 947 images of which 8% uh, indicated tear of the anterior horn of the knee, all lateral meniscus, and 31 of these patients underwent a subsequent arthroscopic examination and only 26% true positive results and 74% false positive results. So finally, they recommended saying that while interpreting, uh, you need to also have your clinical significance in mind. A uh, couple of look at the MRIs, which is there. That's the uh, anterior horn uh, lateral meniscus tear. And that's the picture of a repair tear once that's done about a year's time later, repeat MRI. Another one again, uh, that's the coronal image also there, and that shows the healing of the meniscus. Uh, third image is the anterior horn there, which was left alone, and one year later, that developed into a paramenistal cyst. So your arthroscopic intervention uh, and probing of the tear may be required to confirm the full diagnosis. Our techniques uh, outside in repair is the ideal anterior horn is ideal technique for the anterior horn because it allows for the adequate access of the anterior horn and uh, provides a stable fixation and you don't have uh, too much of intraarticular materials and uh, doesn't require any uh, specific implants so cost effective. Uh, tears in the peripheral two thirds of the anterior horn are typically indicated for repair because of the increased capacity of healing and that's a schematic representation of the uh, anterior horn repair where you have two cannulas, the 16 gauge cannulas going in one with the loop and the other one is straight, both are PDS and you need to pass that PDS through that loop and pull this cannula, the loop cannula out so that it comes out and then you can use a fiber wire if you want or you can use the same sutures or railroad with the fiber wire again and then uh, do it vice versa. That's a video on the uh, So all you require is a 16 gauge cannula, it's a normal cannula that you use and uh, it's got a white book so you can pass your number one PDS monofilament, absorbable monofilament through it and uh, pass on a couple of stitches, you, there's no restriction of stitches as you look at the tear, sometimes if there's a uh, meniscal cyst associated, you need to use a shaver and decompress that cyst and then followed by the repair of that anterior horn to the capsule. No, I think uh, we stopped that. Okay. Yeah, okay. There we go. Uh, that's after the uh, paramedical cyst was decompressed. That's your first stitch. Like I said, when you pass it with the loop. And... Uh, your second stitch goes in there with the monofilament. That's picked up with the grasper of metal. Make sure you don't scuff on the cartilage. That's very close to the cartilage surface. That's something that you ought to look forward to. And then that loop comes, and then you've got to use your suture manipulator and take that stitch off through that loop. So you can have a couple of bites like that. 
Uh, that's very cost effective because PDS doesn't cost much. You can have two or three stitches uh, based on that tear pattern that you have or the size of the tear that you have. So that's something that you can easily suture onto. And uh, you also have something called as a meniscal mender or the mender device, which is usually used for the anterior horns. But again, the uh, cyst is identified and uh, decompressed, and you can see a huge void capsular tissue there along with the anterior horn. That, that needs to be approximated. So you debride that. And uh, again, the uh, cannula is passed along with the PDS. And the second instrument that comes in is the mender device, which has got a preformed loop. You can see that steel device coming in. That's the mender we are there. And that's placed onto the device there, and then it's grasped back onto the tissue. And it's pulled across into the capsule. So you have subsequent tissues coming in and uh, bites, you can have two or three or four bites based on the requirement. I think I'm short of time, so I'll push forward. Uh, okay, and now for beginners, uh, in case you have difficulties in managing the knots and kind of thing, you can always use that anterolateral incision and slightly extend that vertically down so that you can visualize the capsule and make your knots through half inches and kind of thing. So your pearls are the Arthroscope is always placed in the contralateral portal uh, so that you can visualize your anterior horn really well. Distance between sutures should be about three to five. Either a horizontal or vertical mattress suture configuration can be used depending on the nature of the tear. Verticals are much better. And uh, use of as many sutures as necessary to stabilize the tear. Post-operative recovery is uh, six weeks knee mobilizers, partial weight bearing, physical therapy from day one, uh, concentrating on passive range of movements, Knee flexion limited to 90 degrees at the first four weeks and strenuous activities after four months to avoid stress on the meniscal repair. Meniscus healing, uh, the most reliable technique to assess meniscal healing is arthroscopy. MRI is not considered the gold standard because of seeing the signal changes persist for a very long time, often do not correlate with clinical symptoms. And when the healing status is uncertain, I think an MRI is much a better preferred choice. For those of you who really want to start up uh, doing these cases and kind of thing, I think probably Leptard's article is a must read. 